Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the Road Famous Comedy Store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony, Volume 4. Give it up for Tony Henchcliffe. It's me, everybody. Holy shit. Hi, guys. Welcome. You guys ready for a crazy Monday night or what? Come on, live audience. You could do better than that. Let them know the hundreds and hundreds on you stream right now that this is a real fucking live show with a real live audience. Anything can happen. I am super pumped. I had so much fun this week in uh, San Francisco and Sacramento, and now I'm going to uh, Australia and uh, other fun places. Hi, Australia. Brian Redband. Brian Redband's Sweet. here, everybody. Hey, guys. How's it going? Before I plug my dates, Brian Redband. We got the LA Pod Fest this week. Yeah, uh, this Friday at yeah. 11. Yep, and we are uh, going to pick out a couple people from tonight uh, to go join us. There. Oh, shit. The cat's out of the bag on that one. We have to build a little cast for Friday night because obviously we just can't have 50 comics lined up on the sidewalk there. Yeah. So it's going to be a cast at Kill Tony. Yes. We already have uh, who? Nicole Buchanan and uh, did we get Nolan. Uh, Steve Lee here tonight. Steve Lee from last week, the guy with the weird hands. <laughs> That'd be beautiful great. hands. Somebody beautiful wants hands. to tweet at Steve Lee. Tell him that he's invited to the podcast festival. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to do that. Yeah. Um, welcome, everybody. That's right. Boston, October 8th. Bo- Buffalo after that. Sydney, Brisbane, and Melbourne, Australia to close out October 18th to the 30th. That's where I'm going to be. So if you're listening to this podcast, the number one live podcast in the world, that is. <laughs> All right. It's a real quiet Monday so far. What, what happened? Did Reagan and Watkins not get the job done out here? Feels a little cold out here. Am I right? You know what? All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Ryan J. Ebelt is here, ladies and gentlemen, the yeah. house artist. Hey, check it out. A car hit him last week. And uh, so go buy some goddamn prints off of his website, all the Kill Tony what? prints at ryanjebelt.com. A car hit you? No, a car hit his car. Oh. And I, I was going to say an Asian ran into him. I was going to really nail it on the head because that's actually what happened. Oh, really? Yeah. Stereo. <laughs> so stupid. Stereotypical. Uh, all right. Okay. And uh, we got Jamie Vernon on the HD camera. You guys ready to... Uh, what do you say I bring back up the band? Everybody loves the band. I love them. You love them. We all love them. You already got a taste of them tonight. I'm going to bring them up right now. It's the great Reagan and Watkins and Joel Jimenez. <laughs> Welcome back to the Emmys. We're about to present the award for best band on a live podcast. Can I get some applause? Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redman for having us. Thanks so thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. There they are, always with a different topical intro. L- little Emmy, uh, little homage to the Emmys there. And uh, closest thing I guess they could get was a golden turkey. <laughs> Spray painted gold turkey. He's a golden cock, Tony. <laughs> oh, oh, that makes sense. Fuck yeah. Put your hands together for the band, ladies and gentlemen. They're here. We're ready to rock. How are you guys feeling? Good? Excited? Feeling great. Me too. Let's just get into it, shall we? You guys ready Ready for tonight's guests, huh? Woo! Anybody like guests? I like guests. I like it when a show has good guests. This show always has good guests. This week's no different. Put your hands together for two of the greats. It's Joe Rogan and Russell Peters, everybody. Whoa! What? Holy shit! Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, snap. You can hear the belly room crying. We're having so much fun down here. Rogan and Peters. Peters and Rogan. 
Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We're so happy to be here. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about this. Uh, you, guys, uh, you guys see the band's cool intro? How do you guys feel yeah, about the band? good stuff. Outstanding. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you hear uh, that, guys? We're question. endorsed by Joe Rogan now. <laughs> Before we go any further, uh, was that Pete's Weed? Yeah. We yeah. yeah. Pete's a motherfucker. Yeah, he is. How about a round of applause for Pretty Pete, the drug dealer, Pete. ladies and gentlemen? He's the pot Give guy. Give it up for Pete, Pete. the criminal. <laughs> Give it up he for grew Pete, up. the schedule one drug dealer <laughs> I feel like that we so all much talk about know. on the internet. <laughs> Why don't I know about this? You he grows the best pot in the world. Ah. It's effective. It's debatable. Well, whatever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, works, works 100% of the time. That's why I hate when people start bringing up California weed. I'm like, listen, man, it's 2016. All weed's retarded. Yeah. Like, all of it. Yeah. Have you, what, bad weed doesn't survive anymore. It's just different. And bad weed fucks you up, too. That's the weird thing. Gives yeah. you a different buzz. It's like if shitty you get, tequila. If you get, yeah, exactly. Is that real, though? Because I've always heard that, that, like, that idea of like, shitty wine, shitty beer, like the hangover's different. I've heard that's bullshit. I've heard hangover no, is nothing but dehydration. I, I get the reflux from the shitty stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, okay. that's, that's that all sense. very real because yeah. they make it with cheaper. That's sugar shit. and stuff. Yeah, like too, potatoes right? and shit or whatever. Can I just say I love your iPhone cover? Look at this. Nice. What do you got going on here? He's got hold a that, ring. Yeah, you like that, that's right? It's beautiful. Huh? I like it. Oh, I'm going to get you a ring, Joey. I like it. Did you drop? Did you drop your phone a lot regularly, and then you realize? No, just easier. Look, I could fucking watch fucking. Ooh. Just say porn. Oh. Just say porn. <laughs> <laughs> I can watch you at TV, and it's porn. It's sports. Porn. A kickstand. <laughs> I, can, I can't jerk off. Mostly porn sports. Small, you know. <laughs> the news, of course. Yes. Want to be informed. Uh, notes and stuff. Oh yeah. Contracts. Important PDFs. Let's get into this crazy shit. You guys have both done the show a few times. Uh, comedians, you know how it works. A bunch of comedians signed up with a chance to do 60 seconds on this stage. Sometimes it's just a crazy person. <laughs> Sometimes it's a big, amazing, young, rising comedian from around the world that's here for the first time. Sometimes it's some guy that's about to die. We've seen it all. We have seen it all. Comedians, you know how it works. Uh, when you reach your time limit of 60 seconds, you hear the sound of a kitty. That means wrap it up then and start the interview process, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Ooh. There it is. Chasing a mouse. Very good. That's, that's enough, Brian. <laughs> you guys ready to start the fucking show or what? Ready. Let's do this. Ready. Wow. I like this. Very simple name. Looks, it looks like a new name. Give a warm welcome to Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn. Well. One and done. None and done. <laughs> Pete Dunn. Oh, no, that's Josh. Put your hands together. <laughs> Put your hands together for Shalik Jenkins. Fuck. <laughs> well, I'm prepared to shit. Let's move there from New York City. It's nice. I like LA so far. Nice place to be. Uh, your uh, your uh, people are different. Saw this one uh, white guy ha had a kale smoothie. Walk on this black dude's shoes. Yeezys. They're two grand. The black dude flipped out, and the white guy goes, "Calm down, brother. They're just sneakers." Which is like the trifecta of shit you should never say to any nigga. First off, is calm down. Telling a nigga to calm down is like trying to tell a football college player to stop raping girls. Like, they're still going to do it. And someone's still going to get hurt in the end. Brother, I don't think any white person should say brother. Like, this ain't fucking a black exploitation film. It's like, calm the fuck down. And they're just sneakers. They're two grand sneakers. I feel like if you say calm down, brother... Three times in the mirror, in the dark at night, there's gonna be like a nigga named Daquan ready to fight you. That's what I feel like. There you like. go. Show me right, Jenkins. Then. Thank you. Fuck yeah. <laughs> wow. Man, we did like 30 minutes of sound check today for what? Yeah. <laughs> what was that about? What was that? How do you how do you explain that? 
It's, uh, this one? You got, some, you got some good feedback from that. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woo! And so it begins, guys. <laughs> Shalik, you are in it. Grab the Shalik. mic, man. We're going to talk to you for a bit. Oh, awesome. How's it going? We're going how, pretty good. How old are you? How old am I? Uh, 22. Why did you repeat the question, Shalik? <laughs> That's what he would have to do if he was under 21. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how old am well, I? Because it's 21 and over. <laughs> it's totally 22. One year over the link drinking age. <laughs> Shalik, uh, you going to school right now? Nah. No. Nah. You work? Nah. You don't work? You don't nah, go to school? Nah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, as you say, uh, coasting. You know, I'm just... Uh, Living off unemployment. <laughs> How long you been doing stand up? <laughs> How long have been doing stand up? <laughs> One year. One year. Yeah. How often are you getting up? Uh, three times a, a night usually. A night. To. Yeah. Where the That's fuck you good. been going? Uh, well, this I is LA. From, There's no three times a night. Well, I just moved from uh, New York City. That's why. So I've been trying no. to do it here two times a night. You know. Yeah, yeah, How long yeah. have you been in LA? Uh, a month now. Wow. Yeah. You liking it? I like it a lot. Yeah. Nice weather. Nice what people. What part of New York? Uh, Brooklyn. BK all day? Yeah, straight up. Are you West Indian? No. Okay. <laughs> you always got to go racial. I know, I do. I always want to know what people are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's from Brooklyn. There's a solid chance he's Jamaican. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. <laughs> is that where you got the cool shirt with the zipper yeah, on the side? Yeah, the non-functional zipper. Check this shit out. I mean, that is amazing. <laughs> so how do you know what mast to have that at? Like, how do you decide? <laughs> That's a good Thanksgiving dinner shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it varies every day. It varies every day. That is a good thing. From happy <laughs> time to let the sides up. <laughs> looks like I did it again. <laughs> Tony, yeah. You, yeah. you know what he looks like to me? He, lo- he looks like uh, Steve Urkel mid transition to Stefan. <laughs> 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 like he's almost super cool, but like it's like the the nerd is hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> Shalik, tell us more about yourself. When you're not doing stand-up, what are like some hobbies or something uh, that you're into? I, uh, I do like you know sketches and YouTube shit and shit like that. You know, writing, script writing. Do you those know. Instagram videos and shit? Nah, fuck that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that bullshit in their life. <laughs> why? Why do you say fuck that? Because like you know, every kid my age is doing like Vine and shit and things like Nobody's that. Nobody's doing know. Vine anymore. True, true, right? <laughs> Fucking Tarzan's not doing Vine. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, he said you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> No, you didn't, Russell. No. How, you just out Tony Hinchcliffe, Tony Hinchcliffe. Son of a bitch. That means he said a great fucking joke. Listen, folks, I'm, I am a cheeseburger, and I'm surrounded by two puns. <laughs> wait, wait, you just did it. Oh, wait, you spun oh, it on me. Oh, oh a no, reversal. It's Tony, like pro wrestling. T- Tony's the bottom. <laughs> wait a second. How did that happen? <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Can I borrow your uh, zip up polo shirt for my uh, fucking that I'm about to get? <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, man, you're funny. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, you, I appreciate you, it. Thank I you. could tell like you're a little uncomfortable, you know, but, yeah. but everybody you, is. You seemed uncomfortable saying... Yeah, the Same nigga? Yeah. yeah. It seemed yeah. a little... I, yeah. Here's the thing. I'm glad I you brought that up. You're darker my friends, than me. But I'm not going to say it to a bunch of people I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you don't do that, Brian? Do you feel like do you feel like yourself when you're on stage, or do you feel like you have like a little thing up? In yeah, front of yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel real comfortable up here. You know, I'm used to it. You know, I feel good. Now you feel you look like more comfortable. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Like your, body, this, your shoulders relax now. Nice. Yeah, yeah. This is how you got to get the whole time. Yeah, if you can get light. like this the whole, you're a funny dude. You can tell. Thank you, thank you. You know, it's, but this is a it's a weird thing to talk to people and they're staring at you and you have a it microphone. Is. It, it takes is. a long time to get used to just the weirdness of and it. And then you got us fuckheads right behind you. <laughs> word, word. You know what I would do if I was you? What? I wanted to make it like tomorrow. What? I'd start telling everybody that I'm seven years old. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And just go out, say all the stuff that you say, I'm gonna just start the way you say it. I'm gonna just, start doing it. I'm you're gonna be it. like a fucking superstar in no time. Just, <laughs> Do just you a, remember there was just, a girl that did that? There was a girl that did that in New York. Is she re- said, is this "Recent Little Esther." No, it was no, it was uh, <laughs> no, no. But this was legitimate though. She was doing it, and it was in New York in the '90s. And then she got on the Arsenio Hall show. As like the youngest comedian in the country, she was 15, and she was this really tiny girl, so you would buy it. 
And then the phone lines lit up. They're like, bitch, I went to high school with her. She's fucking 30. They're like, she's 30, pretending to be 15. She was fucking crazy. She's like, my parents raised me in the East Village. She just put on an act. It was like at, right at that moment where the internet kind of came in. So, like, people couldn't just bullshit anymore. It was he like lo- a very interesting realization. He looks like what little JJ would have grown up to be. <laughs> what you should do is own it, though. If you're going to yeah. say you're 14, no matter what anybody yeah. says, fuck you. Word, yeah. word, you don't word. know me, bitch. Word. Just right. never let it go. Even if they know you're lying, just keep Just going do what Obama it. did with his birth certificate. <laughs> and just fucking, like, you'll make a fake one later. It'll be perfect. Word, word. Awesome. All right. All right cool. Nice to meet very you, funny, dude. dude. Shalik Jenkins. Yeah. Jenkins. Welcome back to Welcome back to Are You As Funny As A Seventh Grader Is it Hey man Isn't that interesting Because we were just Talking about that Backstage Like there's people there Where you could say Like alright He's got a spark there's, Or she's got a spark There's a something there Oh yeah And then all it is Is just like How much time Are you going to put into it How yeah. much are you going To get better at it How much are you going To listen to your stuff And try to fix the problems And How honest can you yeah. be it's, it's interesting When you see a guy like that Like that's a funny guy Just can he figure it out You yeah. know and we it would, it probably would have been would have been better off in New York though because you get way more stage time over there. I don't think so, man. Go to Frank Castillo's Instagram. That dude gets up three times a night every night. He's doing comedy in bathrooms and people's porches and shit. They, just, they have shows everywhere. I'm not they even do. fucking kidding. They have like, that is bars, so funny, bowling though. alleys. They have outside ones. So just set up speakers, put some fucking folding shitty white in, in wedding York, chairs right? out there. No, people's in, yards in L.A. Oh, oh, well, yeah. oh, Someone oh, has one in their shit, living yeah. room. There's a living room show in L.A. I, I've heard that one. I've heard oh, about that they, they get real comics to go to that fucking thing. They did thing. a taco stand there. A couple years ago. What was her name? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get hurt in between you two. I really do. All right, I got your back, Joe. It's just hurting. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Oh. 60 seconds going to Tommy McGuan. All right, cool. Um, I like to travel. <laughs> That's the thing about me. Just got back from New York City recently. Anyone ever go to New York? Woo! Cool. All right. I had never been. It was my first time going. And I was like walking around Times Square and like jaywalking and like flipping off cars and stuff. And like I felt like a local. Like I felt like I belong. But then I realized that no one from New York ever goes to Times Square. And then I did something else that no one from New York ever does. And that's make eye contact with a homeless person. And it was terrifying. The guy was like, hey, my man. <laughs> and I was like, please, no. Why did you do that? I was scared. Because I'm sure you guys could tell by looking at me, but I'm not a strong fighter. More likely to be seen in a sweater than in a fight. <laughs> Nobody's ever said the words like, hey, let's fuck this guy up. Quick, someone go get Tommy. It's usually like, hey, Tommy, we're going to fuck this guy up. Could you save our seats? Like, I did jujitsu for two years, and in uh, two years, and in two years, I got promoted to yellow belt. All right, cool. <laughs> well, there you go. Go. And then what happened? What happened after you got the yellow belt? Huh? Then what happened after you got yellow belt? Uh, I did, like, a tournament. And, a yellow uh, belt? Yeah, a yellow belt, yeah. Was it a yellow belt tournament? It was a weight range tournament. I was 12, and there was only one other person in my weight range. And they were purple? It was a girl, but, yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about two years. From New York? No, I'm actually from Los Angeles, born and raised, but I was living up in Northern California for the past, like, five years, mm. and I just moved back down. You look like, like you're in a seminary. <laughs> you look like a priest, like an <laughs> Irish priest who like, yeah. left the seminary and started doing stand-up. Yeah, that was my, that was my day job. What's no, it? no, it wasn't. No. Tommy, what do you... <laughs> you got you, Pat. <laughs> Tommy, you're, like, 0 for 6 right now. Uh, stick with me over here. Uh... <laughs> what do you do for work? Uh, I'm in sales for what? medical equipment service, so like MRIs and CT scanners. You sell those? <laughs> yeah, well, and service and everything. The, the actual service or the machines? Both. So we sell the machines. How much is the machine going for, an MRI? Russ um, was thinking about getting his shit checked out <laughs> at home on a regular. He just got fucked up by a yellow belt, that's why. I, uh, <laughs> I'll take no, some of that European tour money. A, how much crazy. does an MRI machine cost? Um, well, so we do third party. So we get what, like these are fucking secondhand ones. Yeah, and dude, so let's th- go in on one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, a good refurbished MRI machine. I've never gone in on an MRI machine with a fellow comedian. It'd be fun thing to co-own. 
from I, from isolation we'll get, tanks. We'll do discount MRI. yeah. Let's see what happens when we turn it on and throw metal in the room because I think it goes towards the magnet. Come yeah. on, Tommy, he sell us died, right? Tommy, haven't people died from that because yeah. they left metal in the room and yeah, they turned the MRI crazy. on? Oh, really? Yeah, it goes yeah. through you like a bullet. Some kid died because uh, they left a fire extinguisher in the room and it pulled yeah. it off the fucking wall. I might have made that up. <laughs> no, no, that's true. That's, yeah. You, so, fucking, you sold the shit out of it, too. I do that. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> On occasion, I'll do that. But I always come clean. <laughs> How much That's is true. it for a uh, secondhand used uh, MRI machine? Um, installed and everything. If you had to sell us on it right now with your pitch, how would you sell us? If you uh, we were really about to buy an MRI machine. So we can get you one from 10 years ago that's really great quality from that time. <laughs> it's only had about seven corpses in it. <laughs> All fire extinguishers. No, but that's 500000 We can get a brand new one from China for 300000 So, But a brand new one. Yeah, but it's a newer model to the... To the com- or to the country, so it's it's just. Recently oh, I like your sneaky US. tactic. You come with the more expensive old yeah. piece of shit, you want yeah. and they say, "Listen, bro, I got a three hundred thousand dollar one that's yeah. even better, and you can and get it right now." And you're like, "Well, that's a simple." See, you set this price, and then we had it in our head. The five, then he went down to the three for yeah. the better model. He got excited. Yeah. Yeah. He, he sets you up for disappointment. Just, I just feel yeah. like buying one now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a master salesman. Classic he sets you up MRI. with the five hundred thousand. You go, God, that's a lot of money. I mean, I don't even know if we could do it. I mean, the clinic's kind of hurting right now, and then. He tells you he's 10 years old, and you start thinking, well, what the fuck? Why am I paying $500,000 to some piece of shit that's 10 years old? Right. And then he says, but they make them in China, and they're 300. And you're like, I don't give a fuck about American jobs. Let's do this, dude. <laughs> Joe, did you, Indians, Joe, did fuck you write Indians. the big short? They're fucking greedy. <laughs> Is there a name brand to the MRI machines? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that's what like, you were thinking, right? Yeah. That's this. Like a, there's a Toshiba, and then there's fucking Dave's House of MRIs. There are Toshibas, yeah. Really? And, but Hitachi's like... Top of the line. Is that true? Yeah. The Japanese. Japanese are killing the game. Yeah. They oh kill the goodness. game and everything. Yeah. Yeah. When they get a hold of something, they fix it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like what they did the automobiles. I mean, yeah. there's automobiles were pieces of shit. And then the Japanese figured out a way to just not make them break. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's like, "Fuck, we got to do that too." <laughs> like people don't remember in the '80s, cars just broke all the time. You drive down the street, 99.99 percent of the time, your car doesn't break anymore. Thank Japanese people. <laughs> Those, get a fucking American car. Get American car from the '60s and try to get to work every day. Good luck, bitch. So, Tommy, you're basically going from doctor's office to doctor's right? office yeah. trying to sell MRI machines. Yeah, yeah. What so. do, you, do you ever walk in on anything crazy on the job, or is it pretty much as boring as it sounds? Like, it, it, you ever accidentally walk into an exam room or something crazy, anything at all with the doctor? Like, ever it's see a titty boring. by accident? Just no. I wish. What do you get? Like, like a sex <laughs> thing? Like no, I said, Russell watches anything. porn on his phone. <laughs> What are you getting, like a nurse thing? Like a nurse and a doctor, they slip Maybe. away, they do morphine together yeah. in a closet. And this guy's at doctor's offices yeah. all the time, probably being forgotten about in some room. Like, oh, the guy trying to sell you uh, MRI machines is in exam room six. So. If you had to guess, how many doctors do morph- morphine and, like, Cialis at the same time? Oh, man. We they do can get whatever parties, they want, right? So probably, like, all of them. Like, okay, uh, yeah. Everybody yeah. knows that third party is the, the best doctors. party. You go to the first party of the night, and that's always fun. Then you go to the after party. The then, thing about doctors the is party. they like to do drugs because they know they work. <laughs> yeah. Somebody has to try them. And they can get them. They have friends. If we were doctors, you tell me you wouldn't write me a prescription for some medical coke? I'd write for whatever you wanted. Whatever Opiates, anybody needed. We'd both be fucked up all the time if we were doctors. <laughs> I have I'd a doctor. Be like, Russell, write I've me. diagnosed you, and you need heroin. <laughs> Just be friends with your doctor, and he'll write whatever you want. Is that the move? My, my doctor's my buddy, and he'll write whatever I need. What do you need? Nothing. Like, what are you talking about? What are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? How deep do you go in the pharmaceutical drawer? I uh, Not heavy duty, just re- this for my reflux. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old reflux. Real, real yeah. fucking gangster shit. Real street cred for that. <laughs> he needs some, Adderall for some, his reflux. Some protonics. <laughs> The cool, the cool way to call it would be acid flashbacks. Yeah, acid reflux, reflux flashbacks. Brian, you've done Adderall, right? Once. That's just, just once? Yeah, I don't like it. Doesn't it just make you focus? <laughs> no, it also makes you have, like, coke effects. Like, you feel like you're having, like, drips and shit. It's, it's, does, I tried to do it while going on stage also, and it just threw my timing off. It's awful. Hmm. <laughs> don't, don't blame that. Right. <laughs> 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 Ruthless. <clears throat> but it seems like it's super popular right now. Yeah, but I think the stuff, the other stuff that the nurses take is way better. You What's know, the nurse stuff? Because it doesn't give Dr. you the Pro Vigil. <laughs> oh, Pro Vigil. <laughs> yeah. oh, Dr. Dick. 
<laughs> oh, I've heard That's of that. That's what Hillary Clinton's on. Yeah, Provigil is yeah. like the same thing as Adderall, but without the Coke effects. It's illegal in the Olympics. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah. I've, I've taken it all the time. I take it, I've taken it uh, five times in the last two months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have a little prescription. Does when you're sleepy? Yeah, if you have to drive somewhere. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about it is it doesn't give you, it's not speed. Like you don't, like your heart doesn't race, but it, it, it keeps you from getting tired. It's very interesting. They give it to fighter pilots. They give it to uh, uh, people with narcolepsy. They originally invented it as a performance-enhancing drug, but you can't sell anything as a performance-enhancing drug, so they had to have some sort of a disease that it was treating. So they said, narcolepsy? I know. You don't fall asleep as well. I know the stories of a couple people that started taking that in their careers like skyrocket. Well, it gives you a lot of energy, yeah. but I don't, I don't like to do it all the time. It gets me nervous because I like it. Yeah. You know? What's I do it, it like, I'm going getting so much shit done. I'm in focus. It's called ProVigil. But I also feel like... Um, what are the side effects, though? Uh, there's no side effects. There really aren't any. Doing too your much. dick grows. I looked it is, up. Uh, just what happens with all of them. I right? took something. They gave me something for fucking... For weight reflux. loss? No, for weight loss. <laughs> and then it was, it's supposed to make you focus and your brain work really well. But then my fucking prostate got enlarged. Hey! I like, like I said, it makes your dick grow! No, it didn't. It Just made the me, wrong part. I had to piss and then nothing <laughs> happened. Uh, but um, Tim Ferriss had a, a point about it. To the, like, he actually decided not to put it in his book, The 4-Hour Body. Because he was worried that with none of the negative side effects that he could cite that it would be almost irresponsible because people would just start taking it like crazy. Yeah. It's like, apparently like, like all the tech guys, like Silicon guys, they just live off that shit. They're doing it all the time. Yeah. And, and here we are with Pete's weed. Pete's yeah. weed. Which is the opposite. <laughs> it's the yes. opposite of provisual. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah. I think they all work synergistically. Uh, Tommy, tell us something else. If you, if, what's the most interesting thing about you? you know, you're like a master skydiver or something oh, like man. that? What are you into? Uh, master I went skydiving once. That was fun. It was pretty cool. But um, I used to rock climb a lot, like outdoors. And And that's where the rocks are. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Oh no, you didn't. (laughs) No, he climbed the actual rock. Mean man, Russell. Uh, Tom, he he goes rock climbing. Where? Where would you do that? (laughs) Did you ever almost fall? Uh, yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot, and you're yeah. like, fuck it, let's keep trying. Because sometimes you do it without the ropes, it's called bouldering, and so you go up like 25 feet, and there's just a little pad, it's called a crash pad, and the people you're with are supposed to make sure you land on it, and so that was always pretty like terrifying. Whoa, how many times did you fall off of that and land on the pad? Um, I don't know, a handful of times. It was he enough. can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hit my head a couple times. No. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Tommy. Did you still rock climb? Not as much, no, because I fell too much. It started hurting a lot. What so. What's the yeah. tallest peak you ever climbed? Um, well, with ropes, I did 100 feet outdoors. Ooh. That was, but it wasn't a super challenging climb or anything, but it was up in Mammoth. Do you ever and do so. anything dangerous or scary? Like, you ever commit a crime, get arrested? <laughs> no, I haven't, no. I peed in a trash can once, but that was about <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. All right, dude. Nice talking to you. <laughs> I peed in a trash can once. I give up, motherfucker. We tried to make trash. you interesting. Tried to make you a con man, a daredevil. <laughs> You're a trash can peer, I peed sir. in a trash <laughs> can once. Most God exciting highlight of your life. I think selling us the cheap MRI machine is the more daring thing. <laughs> yeah. That was a good move. The MRI thing was clutch. I like how you did that. Well, Tommy, it was nice to meet you. Cool. We're going to keep moving guys. on. Tommy McGuan, everybody. He's on Twitter, Tommy McGuan. How about that? Shalik Talks TV with Shalik Jenkins on Twitter. Fun. Tommy McGuan's first time on the show. All right, I pulled another name out. Joey Cruz. Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho. Wow. Are people just scared because Rogan's up here? And <laughs> I didn't do anything. I'm the nice one. You're probably intimidating, though. For I'm the somebody. nice one. How about this Russell Peters is mean. <laughs> <laughs> How about Josh Gibson? Snapping me. Good evening, everybody. I uh, I do not own a gun. I would never own a firearm, you guys. 
I am not allowed to. Any other felons in the room tonight? Felons? Raise your hands in the fun way. I was filling out uh, tourist papers to go to Australia. Turns out if you have a felony, they don't just let you walk into Australia. Fucking hypocrites. These glasses are pretty new. The optometrist says that I am nearsighted, which means I have trouble seeing things that are far away. You know, like everyone does. <laughs> Who are these assholes that can look infinitely into the distance? <laughs> Beard's pretty new. I like having the beard and the glasses. Before I had the facial accessories, I kind of looked like, um, like I looked like the guy who would thank the prostitute. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck yeah, Josh Gibson. See, that's what I'm talking about. This, this is not a guy who's just peed in a trash can. You understand? <laughs> How's a guy that's peed in a trash can while there's been a burning body inside of it? You know? <laughs> How long have you been doing this? Uh, just a couple of years. Well, was, funny, was, dude. Well, funny. Thank you. Yeah, thank very you. Really fun. good joke. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, what's your felony for? Yep. Uh, I stole a bunch of money uh, from somebody I didn't know. Uh, they, they left the, uh, the car open, window down, trunk unlocked, everything. Uh, and it was <laughs> trunk unlocked. Dude, Every, what I mean, a it was moron! Popped, it was slightly popped and everything. I'm telling you. And so, uh, <laughs> oh, you how, mean much, you... how much money? We didn't know until the police arrived. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you waited around. Uh, they were they were waiting for us. We had been doing this for about four hours that night, uh, and just going into cars that like, hey, lock all your lock all your cars, guys. Lock all your <laughs> lock all your cars. How old were you? Uh, I was 19, young and dumb. I'm 33 now. Yeah. You're right about Jesus' age to die. That's right. So. I made it. I made it. I believe it. he was also stealing money out of cars when he was 19. <laughs> so you're right. That's right. right I was giving it to people far less deserving. How long did you go away for? Uh, I actually didn't go to jail. I'm white, so. <laughs> wow. <Ooh>. Nice. <laughs> He's got, he's got a solid point. See, I, uh, when you say things like that, it makes all the other like taunts about white privilege feel good. It's totally true. It, it's, makes it, it, it really is true. It. If, I, if, I was not, if I did not look like this, I'm certain I would still be in jail. Well, where, where was this at? Uh, Fairfax, Virginia, the second richest county in the country. A few of if your guests are wow, from over there. Have you ever had your cars stolen <laughs> out of when you were there? These people are proud to be from this shithole. And you girls missing sunglasses. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, good times. <laughs> wow, Josh, that's interesting. So the car that you went to was a it was a Sting, and they got you. Hook, line, uh, and we we had we had decided that uh, the suburbs there was not enough cars, and that we would go to a uh, townhouse neighborhood. And uh, yeah, this closer was together. Yeah, closer together. Uh, trick or treating for you. Uh, in, in effect, yeah. I mean, we got a bunch of power tools and all. That's, well, the police got a bunch of power tools. Um, anyway, uh, so after a while, this guy, this guy had seen us. It was, it was sometime in the early a.m., and he had seen us, and he called the cops, and they were waiting for us. We got back to the car. We had the bag that we had just taken from the, from the car. Uh, we didn't know, you know what was in it. We thought it was a laptop. The police opened it up. It was separate baggies full of different amounts of cash. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nobody believes that that money was legitimate, uh, but it was not my money. Were they so. like quarters from different eras? Yeah. <laughs> 1965 he was, he was pennies. Collector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Full of nickel. <laughs> so you had got no time. How long have you been out of Virginia? Uh, I left Virginia in 2006. What do you do for work now? I do title insurance. I research who's allowed to encumber property. Isn't that ironic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you feel bad when you got caught, or did you feel stupid? Uh, I, I felt really stupid. I did not like... I mean, I, I liked that I didn't go to jail, but it wasn't... Like, I didn't feel satisfied. But I felt, I felt so bad, I, I, I decided... I joined the military because I felt so bad. It was, it was really? one of these, like... I know that I still owe. Uh, really? So, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was just a... It, I'm back at zero after that. And then after uh, the military, I was like, what's the most boring indoor air-conditioned job that I can do? And it's title insurance. Are you trying to, pun you <laughs> <laughs> you trying to punish yourself? Not anymore. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm even now. I'm good. But did you take the job so that you could punish yourself? Or did you actually want that job? The title, the title insurance, insurance job? I yeah. got that so I could keep doing comedy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I discovered comedy after after the military. You get the GI Bill, uh, and I discovered uh, comedy while I was doing the GI Bill. GI nice. Bill is, that, uh, is that GI Joe's brother? Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> now that's a fucking good one. You got to admit, Joe. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 
That's on the spot. You think I had a locked and loaded it's GI I Bill, Joe? I, just, I it's, can't. I son can't of a bitch. Anymore. It's actually what my doctor <laughs> sent me after I went for gastro. Uh, <laughs> GI Bill. Oh, you both of you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we're just a couple of wild and crazy GIs. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Well, hey, man, you're really funny. Keep <laughs> it up. You. Very good. Really it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really funny very much. Yeah, fun times. There he goes, hey, Josh hey. Gibson. Let's keep it moving. At Josh Gibson Jokes. Let's keep it moving before we talk to him too much and we're accessories to some crime or something like that. Some body in Virginia. This looks like another new name. How about Andrew Clement? Oh, shit. It's good intro music. Here he comes. Up. This way, Andrew. Okay, well, there you go. Jesus. Here he comes. Super entrance. If you're listening to the podcast, a zip line just came down from the ceiling. How are we doing tonight, y'all? Good? Okay, while we're on the subject of crime, uh, I'm a comedian. I've done this joke uh, a couple times. Uh, it's the first time I've been able to speak openly with a crowd about it. So, is patriotic yes or no? If you go to a restaurant, I'm not saying which kind, um, Vietnamese, Latino, etc., etc., and you know for a fact that they are hiring illegal immigrants, but you as American citizen pay tax dollars for immigrants to not be in this country. So... If you, let's just say, once a week, have a lunch there, and casually slip out the back door, is that not calling it even? Is that not patriotic? Are you not taking? No? I, I think different. I, and I don't... I have empathy for my crowd, but um, I don't... Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't... You are one of the few people that's ever been heckled in a 60-second set. <laughs> and that is just ruthless. That, that bitch didn't give you any air. She's like, nope. On a, <laughs> on a nope. side note, how much shit do you have in your pockets? <laughs> <laughs> what is in there? I know it's not a joke book. Oh, Jesus, Tony. <laughs> what do you say? Andrew, how's it going, man? Good. How, long, good. How, how many times have you done stand-up comedy before? A lot. Really? Oh, Gidoki. Uh, <laughs> really? Where at? Uh, I've done this stage quite a bit. Uh, main room, ha-ha. I've done Carol's This Station is the main room. <laughs> in New Orleans. Where I'm from, I'm from Louisiana, so I've done a couple of spots over there. I've been doing oh, Louisiana. it for like four or five years. I thought I thought your pants were so s- tight that they made your voice retarded. <laughs> but do you always talk Louisiana. like that, Andrew? It is a little bit. Of, it is a little bit slow. Are you always this slow? You feeling okay? Is Are this you, you? I'm just making sure we're getting the right you here. Yeah, this is me. Uh, yeah. I'm not used to taking on this many angles at the same time. You, know? I got you this said guy here, you, you, this you guy bragged here. 35 seconds ago that you've done this stage before. Yeah, but he means well those people behind well, you. Well, that's a fact. I'm not oh, bragging. Just I'm ignore just those two facts. guys behind you. <laughs> 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 All right. It's, yeah, it's, there's so many people up here behind yes. him. It's very that's not totally unnatural. Well, yeah, for a comic <laughs> to have this, especially this many people behind. Yeah, you. it's just weird. It's like you're you guys are taking Andrew Clement's side on this. Really? All right. No, obviously it can be done. We've seen people do it. <laughs> people in the round. It's, it's, it's kind of a setup. Left. It's a setup. It kind of Andrew, fucks with you, right? I, I want to meet you. I want to. I want to know more about you because I have no fucking idea what you were talking about in the '60s <laughs> seconds at all. Uh, Andrew, it, I want to ask okay. you. I never got any clear idea of what you were saying, but it seemed right that you were being heckled. <laughs> Normally, I stop people it, when that it, happens. It's a controversial subject for sure. Let's yeah. figure out who you are and in today's <laughs> segment. Who are you? <laughs> we really want to know. Here we go. Andrew. Shoot. You're from Louisiana. Yes. What do you do for work? Uh, Can we yeah. guess? Jack of all trades, master of nothing. So you're like Let's an illegal immigrant. I'm an Uber driver, yeah. Oh, did you just hear that? You're an Uber people driver? People are missing shit. There's too much noise going on here. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. 
Uh, how long you been driving an Uber? <laughs> Do you drive as slow as you talk? <laughs> oh! Oh, Jesus Christ, Tony Hinchcliffe! <laughs> Depends on the passenger. Are you the smart one in your neighborhood? <laughs> Are you the smart one that, oh, man, I gotta get the fuck away from y'all retards? <laughs> y'all retards is holding me back. Plus Mexicans. How long? You, how <laughs> Mexicans taking I mean, the jobs that I would. I don't take. say it, but I'd like to think. I so want to work in the kitchen too. Shit. <laughs> it's a good kitchen. You ever look in there? It's clean. Andrew, I'm gonna ask you a question. I want to see how fast you can answer it. Ready? First word that pops in your head. You ready? Shoot. What's your least favorite race? White. What was that? White. See, that's how those social justice warriors get you. You're supposed to say, I love all races equally, but they get you paranoid, and then you're on the heel, and then you start saying crazy so shit you, you don't even mean. I don't even like white, white, white people. Yeah. Like, if you're walking home, it's 4 o'clock in the morning, is that giant white guy coming your way or a giant black guy coming your way? <laughs> you could pick. It doesn't matter to me. Which Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay, not there's get, ten he's of not them. getting shit out of my pockets, obviously. Just as long as it's not a gator. <laughs> maybe, well, it'll maybe take that, a while, but if they that can get into... Infection, that about, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's going to catch up with you, buddy. Yeah, if your prostate enlarges in those pants, you're fucked, sir. <laughs> yeah, you should wear some kind of bacteriostatic underwear, like maybe wool or something like that. <laughs> how, I thought about it. How long, have you, how, how long have you been out of Louisiana? It's wool. It's very fine. Eight years? Eight years. You have like a crazy super white family with a farm and all that? Like, is it how I picture a little barn on a hill with some extra sheds and shit in the back? A lot of screaming. No. What part no. of Louisiana are you from? Uh, Baton Rouge. Baton Capitol. Rouge. Like suburb? They have a or... good history with the black community lately. Um, <laughs> they do? Yeah, am I the only one who watches the fucking news? <laughs> Apparently. What's going on you in got... New York? <laughs> in New York. You... Oh, right, yes. <laughs> Bombs. <laughs> Yeah. Andrew, what were you trying to say in your 60 seconds? You go to a restaurant, there's people working in the back or something. What were, what were you saying? What's the gist of it? So, wait, wait. I got the, the joke idea came from when I was in college. I went to the University of Mississippi, and there was these two Mexicans. <laughs> they are there proud like, to oh. have you there. <laughs> like, that you just know. shot their fucking... They're so proud Future to have you Future attendance through the floor. <laughs> at that fine university. People are going to get a hold of this podcast. He got in. I didn't get in. He got in? <laughs> so there was Taco Tuesdays, right? <laughs> So there was Taco Tuesdays, right? And I brought a bunch of people to the taco place. And the taco place was... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, nobody brought their wallets. Nobody wanted to pay. So I suggested we just leave. And I, all the girls were like, oh, my God, that's so hot. Let's do it. Da, da, da. So, yeah, I did it. We don- it's cool. Wait, wait it's a second. Hot. What? Wait. Wait, a- wait. I just <laughs> oh want to tell God. you, there's some good things that grow in the South. Wait, okay. dirty, crazy Southern broads. I love it. Keep talking to me. Okay. Wait, the girls. What were they wearing? <laughs> if so, we, if what we, were they wearing? cowboy boots with no shoes. Please say yes. Cowboy so boots and no dirty we dined feet, and dashed. I went feet. and got my car. They ran out the back. I picked them up. We, you know, scurried off. Got drunk, fucked, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it was like they were turned on. It was like stealing, crime. stealing from the people. Uh, the, you know, the chicks loved it. But anyway, I felt wait a minute, bad wait a minute, about it. Wait, wait, the chicks <laughs> loved what? I feel wait like minute, you could just like add that into any story. She li- okay. What are these chicks even doing in the like, story? It seems took- like she liked it because you guys were robbing from particular kinds of people. So it was nice. Is that what you're saying? It was daring. It was a good old-fashioned racist crime. No, it wasn't like we put... Goddamn oh, he your up, head and went to the nearest Mexican restaurant and ordered all the food and didn't pay for it. You're like dipping your toe in the racist pool here. And well, it's a good thing I'm here, guys. Um, <laughs> the, and then that's why we have our racist super referee, uh, Russell <laughs> Peters. That's I'm more concerned that there's Mexicans in Mississippi. Um, <laughs> Very true. How the fuck did they get over there? <laughs> hustle. Good, Those ones aren't good illegal. Question. Mexicans hustle. The legal ones are trying to get into the center of America. It's like, I stay close to here. <laughs> they were suspicious, so I didn't pay them. <laughs> they were suspicious, so you didn't pay them. Did you eat the food? Yes. I did you ever just tell them at a gas station and not pay either because they look like me, you son of a bitch? Um, <laughs> Yeah, where do you draw the I'm line on this? <laughs> do you feel bad about it? That's why I'm on stage talking about it, because I did feel bad about it. And I was like, man, 
That was wrong. I mean, it probably came out of somebody's paycheck. I wanted to justify yeah. it. Out, hey, yeah, man, definitely. I don't like white people either. Hey. I was in the moment. Hey, hey you're the reason you. you don't like white people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, you're right. Tony Maybe did. it's one of those Tony Robbins things, man. You get to get a love yourself. It was just a with a dip in, so, you know. Uh, I Tony? This one. Did, yes, yes, Jeremiah. Did, did Theo Vaughn get Down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy Jeremiah. Oh shit! <laughs> <Not cool. laughs> so, <laughs> what happened? Do you have any? Do you have any uh, f- like family members who lynched people? Do you know Brian? Stop that! A- any 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 song or sound but that. Find a new one. <laughs> any lynchers in the family? <laughs> All right. I- now there's no control. Answer the question. I do want to know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, God, I love this show. I just like that there was these southern girls who found it attractive <laughs> to like leave the restaurant. Like, if you dine and ditch this Taco Tuesday, I'll suck your dick in the parking lot. Because <laughs> that is hot right there. But she'll leave before he comes, you know, because... <laughs> Because it's their M.O. <laughs> so, Andrew, you've been out of there for how long again? <coughs> out of where? Louisiana. You've been here how long? How long have you been in L.A.? He's mine. He's back in that fucking I've restaurant. I've been in L.A. eight years. <laughs> the good yeah. old days of robbing Mexicans. Hey, hey, he's an Uber driver. We may have Taxi Driver 2, a sequel to Taxi Driver. Uh, what's I your like least favorite uh, type of people to pick up in your, uh, in your Uber? I say that. Andrew, what's that? What's your least favorite type of customer in your Uber? Um, what kind of what kind of car do you have? First of all, before you answer that, wait, what? What kind of car are you driving for the Uber? Uh, Mercedes. Fuck G-O-K. yeah! You know why? Which one? Because the chicks love it. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a street Jeep. Chicks love it. It's the GLK 350. Oh, so you're not Uber X. You're like Uber Request or some yeah. shit. Uber wow. <laughs> He's the more expensive Uber. I feel like they get in you the know car. What I'm saying, man. Yeah, tr- yeah, I Travis Hickel. The, the whole the whole Whoa. video bond with Down syndrome was a <laughs> What was that? It was Rocket a low blow, bizarre. right? It was a low blow. Andrew, you do seem like you've been concussed at some point in your life, though. You do know that. You, do, you, you have to be aware that you have I've some kind of delivery. Of People are like, oh, you're like smooth or something like that. But it's really like you're like on like a yeah. one and a half second delay a little bit. You know it, right? It's part of your swagger. It's like a telecast from bra- Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's just say he's a war correspondent. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Let's just say I try to use it to my advantage, you know, with the ladies. <laughs> Are you sober? Yes, I am. Ah, oh, Joe Rogan with you the ten star question. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that last night that you partied, what happened? Because I'd imagine there had to be some dead bodies or something. Yeah, it was a big car collision, and I just walked home, went to sleep, and shook it off. <laughs> Three you don't car remember collision. the part where you, uh, you don't remember when you fell and hit your head that night? Well, I also fisted uh, a gator that night. I mean... <laughs> 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 I don't listen to myself talk, so I can't yeah. really. Know. Neither are we. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, tell us one more like fun fact or something interesting about you that you think it makes you interesting. Uh, well, y'all all love this one, I guess, to add on to you. <laughs> this one time I went into a <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> I'll tell you what. One time I, my pillowcase was missing. <laughs> oh, oh boy. boy. <laughs> Grandpa you had all the scissors gonna love in this. his hand. I have a movie on Netflix called The Co-Ed and the Zombie Stoner. Uh, I'm the zombie stoner um, to uh, wow. spoil it. I don't believe it. Well, Netflix it. It's got one star. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> in Hustler ratings, that's uh, not erect at all. 
That's a. Uh, what's your Uber star? Uh, what's your Uber star? Hustler rating. I'm like, who remembers hustler rating? You and I. Four eight seven, <laughs> something like that. Hey, four seven. Four, Where do you eight. think you went wrong? If there's one thing in your Uber that you might think you're a little bit weird about, like you always go your own direction or something like that. Uh, do you use ways when you're driving them? Sometimes. Gas. Were you? Depends. Did you walk away from a collision while driving Uber? <laughs> <laughs> no. Isn't that funny? It's a, it's a, it's a goober driving Uber. It's a, it's a nobody, goober. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch! That was it. That was that yeah, was not bad. There's just too many people bags, talking. Human fist, you Wait. know, football well, helmets, all kind of shit. Wait, you just told us all the things you've been knocked out by. Yeah. <laughs> you should fight the last guy who has a yellow belt. <laughs> Have you been to see a neurologist? Don't don't go. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, keep on keeping on, dude. MRI machine. Yeah. <laughs> Just, listen, keep on keeping on. Don't don't even look at it. Just keep walking. His, his MRI comes back and it just says, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew, anything else? N- next most interesting thing about you? Any answer there? I uh, don't get brain freeze. <laughs> And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, all amazing, amazing clothes. Andrew Clements, everybody. There he goes. Excellent dismount, sir. Excellent dismount. Congrats on your temporal lobe. can't get brain freeze. He pulled out of that. Wow. He (laughs) can't get brain freeze. (laughs) That was a a very good dismount. Easily one of my all-time favorite answers to the question, uh, (laughs) next most interesting thing about you. Like, he's got awareness, right? It's almost like he knows he's got water in his ears. (laughs) You're like, I know something's off, man. And chicks think it's cool. You can't get brain freeze. (laughs) Unbelievable. He knows. He knows. He's like, he's trapped. It's Turns like they out say about people brain. that are in a stroke, they're like in a catatonic state. They're looking at you like, motherfucker, I'm right here. I just can't do anything about it. I mean, everything about him said that his brain was slightly detached from the stem. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then and he closes with, oh yeah, I can't get brain freeze. <laughs> he's, he's the only Someone guy in the here. room that could... He would beat us all in a milkshake drinking contest. <laughs> How does that make you feel? I don't like losing. I like winning every little contest that I take part in. Uh, and that would upset me. His fun party trick is getting a Slurpee machine, just resting his hand. <laughs> Watch his belly rise. <laughs> this is blue. Like Homer Simpson in front of a keg. That's what I pictured, too. <laughs> I think it's a chemical thing, for sure. They should go to wherever he was raised and dig up that dirt. <laughs> They fucked it. They, they fucked those people down there, he, down in the south. They just dump shit and study people. He's a grown up Zika. Go baby. to infoworlds.com, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> infoworlds.com. <laughs> can barely get through talking that Pete's weed. God I pulled another name out of the bucket, so he gets sixty seconds. Bradless Philostite. <laughs> Um, slavery has never been cool, <laughs> except for right now, because there's some dope ass slavery movies coming out. You can be uncomfortable, so I'm gonna finish this joke. Yeah. Like uh, slavery movies are just becoming uh, just as good as uh, Holocaust movies. But I'm sick and tired of seeing like uh, <clears throat> sad slavery. Like I want to see a new type of slavery movie. Like, I want to see, like, a slave rom-com. <laughs> Can you imagine a trailer for a slave rom-com? Like, have you ever fell in love at the wrong time? <laughs> <laughs> Historically, you ever done that show? Historically. What would you title slave rom-com? What would you title it? Like, Sleepless in Mississippi? <laughs> Ten Things I Hate About Cotton? When Harriet met Tubman, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Very Bradless good. Very Philostite. Good. How do you... I- that was great. How do you say your name? Uh, Bradless Philoctite. Bradless Philoctite? 
Falaktet. Falaktet. Yes. Gotcha. Is that Haitian? How long have yeah. you been doing comedy, man? How long have you been doing it? Uh, three years. You've, that was really good joke writing, man. Yeah. The way you set it up, the way you entered into it, knowing you have a 60-second set. Yeah. Funny shit. And it's so true. It is, Almost dying totally in the beginning. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny, dude. You're funny. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? Uh, Miami. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, almost a year. What do you do for work? I uh, work at a hotel. What hotel? Uh, Casa Del Mar. Oh, I shouldn't say the fucking name of the hotel. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of he hotel is it? Holiday Inn. I've never that heard of one dude that you work was going to rat you out. <laughs> he, he'll, he, he'll, he'll, so we can fix it if you want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hotel? Is it sort of a shitty hotel? Cause no, if no, it it's is, like a fancy I'm, hotel like Oprah goes there. And oh, shit. cool. Like, I shouldn't oh, fucking shit. say Oprah. Damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Red man. Now you're fucked. I think I realized something. I can pretty much just ask you anything. Uh, so uh, I'm an open okay. book right now. Just say anything. Way What's go, the uh, room number and the safe combination to the hotel? <laughs> that, 7240. Uh, <laughs> Bradless about to oh, be shit. jobless. <laughs> <laughs> My food is good. I'm good. You ever get to see anybody cool other than Oprah there? Um... Well, not somebody cool, but the other day I saw Tupac's brother. <coughs> One Pac. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's me and Tony on the road for like days at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, and I kept on calling him. I, he wanted like he kept on giving me his real name, but I just kept on calling him Tupac's brother. <laughs> like, oh, like you're no. Tupac's brother, and he just would never t- t- to to his face. Him. Yeah, to his face. Yeah. Wow. I should be fired from that job. Really. Jeez. Well, you could do it. Just quit. Fuck it. <laughs> if you care about your job and you're a comedian, you fucked up. You're oh, supposed yeah, to have yeah. a disposable job. Oh, you yeah. know, otherwise you'll keep it. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to keep your job. You don't want a safety net. You can't. What does Tupac's know. brother do? Uh, um, you I think give he's a just, fuck? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's I think it's just Tupac's brother. How'd you work? I, like, <laughs> goes to carnivals and shit. There was like a white... <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> okay, but it's Tupac's brother. <laughs> two tickets? Two tickets. <laughs> fuck, I don't know if I want to take a picture. He, two he, he still makes less than the hologram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That hologram is doing Coachella. I know. That's got to be fucked up for Tupac's brother at that carnival. Can't get a free ticket. (laughs) (laughs) What else do you remember about hanging with Tupac's brother? Anything else stand out Uh, to you? He had like uh, gold chains from the 90s and shit. That's mm. that's when Tupac died. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Money ran out. These are leftover fucking chains. (laughs) Maybe they're his brother's chains out of respect. Ever think of that, man? <laughs> what shift do you work oh, at the two, I mean, his fucking and brother two died chains was, two get, chains was there two actually. chains has too many chains yeah, keep yeah, calling yeah, two, two chains yeah. Yeah. yeah two chains is you can't great, have four yeah. chains and call yourself two chains that's yeah. just fucked up yeah he's a good tipper that, though, that's so bad like, math two that's chains is a good tipper but Tupac's brother just wasn't buying yeah, yeah Tupac's a app yeah. Well, yeah well they both had two you're swinging at anything what are you working at the hotel I said it Dorman Bellman you work uh, just late easy. night sometimes? Yeah, sometimes it sucks. Dude, yeah. let's just tank this job for you right now. Tell those people to go fuck themselves. Oh, okay, God, here, let me tell you. You're too funny to be doing this shit, man. You need to get an Uber driver with that last guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Start driving people around. That's your I, I think we know what kind of people he doesn't like in his car. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up the slack. I just got health insurance, so it's like... Let me oh, work. see, that's how they get you, man. Uh, I know, they I know. get with that man. fucking 401k bullshit. Next thing uh, you know, you're you're doing that forever. Next thing you know, you're the you funniest quit, bellman dude. in L.A. Dude, <laughs> you, you absolutely could be a professional stand-up comedian, 100%. I think the audience probably agrees, right? Yeah. You just got to do it, man. Just Yeah, just do it, for sure. It's not easy. Your spot is like the hardest spot. where you've got talent, and then you have to figure out how to ditch the job. It's the yeah. hardest spot because yeah. nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to just cast away the net and take a chance. So you've got to have like, some disposable job. Right. You know? Like a lot of people, like, what'd you do? What'd you do when you were like, struggling? I just worked at shoe stores and sold fucking socks door to door. I did whatever. Yeah, but you didn't give a fuck I about any of those fuck. jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I delivered newspapers. I was what a bellman before. You at, delivered at newspapers? Yeah, every was day. It? Yeah. Hey, Tommy still has the hat. And the tips were <laughs> shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did it again, Jeremiah. <laughs> Watkins too scared is on tonight. 
the retard joke, the paperboy hat. He's on. He's, <laughs> he's scared. That's my career too. in a nutshell. He's on <laughs> the retard joke, the paperboy hat. <laughs> Kid, the he's kid's the good. <laughs> John Rogan, L.A. Times. Can I get a quote? <laughs> I enjoy mongoloid material. I like when they pick on the disenfranchised and the people who have disabilities. I always enjoy that because I don't have disabilities, so I can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Bradless, that was awesome, man. Thank nice you so to much, Great Quit your job, it. brother. Seriously. Quit. Quit your fucking job. Bradless, if you're free, uh, if you're free Friday, come to the uh, LA Podcast Festival with us, will you? Bradless, the lost site. Breaking news, Bradless. Dude, you guys got some talent tonight. Yeah. Some fucking talent tonight. You've had some killers lately. Let's get through our uh, two regulars, and then we'll go to the bucket one last time and get out of here. How do you guys feel about that? We have two regulars every single week. They do a brand new 60 seconds every single week. That's sort of a tough thing to do. Very, very hard. And uh, it's awesome. This uh, your first comedian. You know her. You love her. Here she is, Vanessa Johnston, everybody. <laughs> With a new 60 seconds. Live on Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world. <laughs> Vanessa are Johnston. You, are you number one now? Something I just say. <laughs> Vanessa Johnson, everybody. Yeah. Um, this week, a homeless guy asked me out on a date. He walked up to me and said, hey, girl, you got a quarter? I was like, no, sorry. And he was like, oh, okay. You single? <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like, girl, you know I'm good with boxes. Imagine what I could do with your box in my box and he was actually kind of hot (laughs) so I was like maybe no you know eventually some girl is gonna walk by him and go I can fix him (laughs) I'll give him a bath teach him how to read and then we'll get married and have babies and whenever people ask her about him she'll go well he's a rescue Nailed it. Vanessa Johnston. It's another new minute. That's a good one. Thank you. I feel like it's awkward now. It's a little. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, that has great beats and a fun misdirect. I'm curious as to how much of it, like, how... It's true? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this week I was doing a bar show in Van Nuys, and the part that was true is the guy walked up to me, asked me if I had a quarter, I said no, and he was like, okay, you single? And then I wrote everything else. Right. Sometimes that's all it takes, is a fun little spark to get it all going. It's good. Uh, and the fun misdirect that I didn't see coming was you thinking that the homeless guy was hot for a second, like, <laughs> that part's funny to me. Was, it, was that part true? Was he mm-hmm. semi-attractive, sort of like a yeah. young... Right. I was like, he's confident, like... <laughs> yeah, that does take super confidence <laughs> to go from quarter to, like, want to go on a date. He's like a man's man, you know, I don't know. A broke man's man. <laughs> hey, do you have a quarter? No? You want to go on a date? You buy? <laughs> For sure, obviously, right? That's so funny. Where, where do you think he would have wanted to go? Where would, where would you take a girl if you what guys day were of the homeless? Week was it? it was uh, Wednesday. Well, who has specials on Wednesday? Specials on a Wednesday. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like there's a, I know there's a fucking day week day by day pit different blade. You know, all right, go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be crazy being a homeless guy having the balls to ask a girl on a date though. That is sort of an interesting thing that I don't. I've never really heard about that often. Well, it's interesting that confidence is that attractive, like e- even slightly, because guys don't really give a fuck if a girl's confident. As long as she's nice. That's true. We do like prefer nice. Like, if she'll nice, talk to you, you're like, oh, you'll talk to me. Great. Like, <laughs> women don't have to be aggressive towards men. So the idea of confidence being a, a characteristic that you look for, you know, it's interesting. It's like, that's like, no guys ever say that about a girl. Like, yeah, man, she's really confident. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice way of saying she was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Super duper confident that one. Like, so she confident. thought she could hang out with me. Like, you might use that in a long term descriptive. Like, she's really smart. She's really confident. Very interesting to talk to her. But you wouldn't just go with the confident thing right away. Like, oh, dude, you got a confident one? Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she'll probably know when you're fucking with her and she'll break up with you early. 
<laughs> she's smart. She's not going to take your bullshit. She's a confident one, right? It's weird. Whatever. I'm high. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you have that was awesome. People are on my wavelength or not. I'm just, I'm done. That was a very funny minute. <laughs> Vanessa Johnston. Yes, thank you. Did it again. Have Vanessa Johnston. Vanessa Johnston. How about this, Joe? You it's hear? interesting what she said too about women uh, wanting to fix men. That is another like oh, re- yeah. repeating. Yeah, that was another great part trait. of that. It's very weird. That does seem it like the weird. super fixer. Yeah, they, they want to refurbish us. But super common. Like an right? MRI machine from ten funny. years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm stuck on those. You wouldn't necessarily need to g- get fixed up if you already had that much confidence. I mean, you, you got could pink pick hair. Your confidence got to be pretty Yeah, but high. she would try to fix you, right? Like, dress you better, do your hair better, and maybe, like, get you to just stop acting. Just in be a mother and a yeah. whore at the same time. Whoa. The fuck? Jeez. Jeez. Pat Reagan. Some of you, you, just you want to get out dark. of your chest right now? <laughs> you just no. <laughs> you got super weird on us, dude. Sometimes he voices his opinion against the establishment. <laughs> Whatever that Man. means. <laughs> I've heard like a scatter of those words before. I want to see Pat's Tinder profile. Looking for a motherly figure and a whore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's true. You know, I mean, that's what that's what that's you know, probably relationships a relationships have a lot of that element. So I was just saying something that was true. Totally. We got gotcha. you all the way. Even Snoop agrees. Be a wait a minute. Live feed right now. You can't just let that go. <laughs> You don't want to let it go? There's something there. something in that. I think you've been hurt. I think you've it's not. Um, well, I, I, have, uh, I have mother issues. Um, no shit. Like what? what <laughs> what's the best? Wait, but girls want to girls take care of me and do stuff, and then I'm just like a freak. So That's a big generalization. Girls want to take care of girls me. That I, girls that I hang some, out. Girls that I some spend. Some girls that are girls into that, that shit. Spend, girls that I end up with. Right. Want to really like... Take, take care, care of, of you, me. right? Yeah, like breastfeed you, and <laughs> do you feel I like mean, that's a everything change but. your diaper? And that's a pattern, a common pattern, the mother whore thing. Yeah, was your mother a, a whore? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. No, I can't like, even. Like you wouldn't know. I can't even picture her having sex. Is she good? Is she a hot mom? No. Are you just saying that because you don't want us to talk to her? No. Okay. What do you want him to say? My mom's gross. <laughs> well, my mom's good. She's got big tits, but you know, you don't want those. You know. What's like the most nurturing thing you've ever had a girl that you've been hooking up with like do for you in a motherly way? First thing that pops in your head. Um, I mean, just just make me food and give it to me in bed. When you say give it when to you, when you say you give it to you in bed, do you mean the food or <laughs> food <laughs> or the dildo? <laughs> There you go, Pat Reagan. And when you say food, like like what kind of food? Like a bowl of cereal, like, like children's like, cereal, like, like kale and eggs, yeah. kale, kale and, and eggs. eggs. Wow. Because <laughs> you know, because she's a mother, because she's a mother, she wants to make healthy stuff. Mm. You did it. So these are these are hipster chicks. <laughs> No, they're just health conscious, Russell. Health conscious. <laughs> Joe, you want to hear something super cool? Absolutely. We have a uh, we have a regular who is back, and she just turned twenty one. She was get the fuck out of here. She was on the show for weeks, and then we found out. Uh, remember when they cracked down, and all of a sudden, mm, a, couple, a year or two or whenever ago, uh, people under twenty one weren't allowed on anymore. And then last weekend, she turned twenty one again, writing a new minute every week. Here she is, Ali Makovsky, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just got fired from my job. Uh, I worked at a movie theater, uh, which sucks. I got fired. My managers, they called me into the office, and they're like, hey, Allie, we're going to have to let you go. You're unprofessional. And I said, I didn't know that this was a profession. Uh, I, as you, you guys have ears, so you can hear that I have like a very monotone voice. That's just how I talk. Makes having sex hard, cause no guy wants to hear me be like, "Oh yeah, sweet, uh huh, sure, chill." <laughs> I had to start watching porn just so I could sound alive. <laughs> So now when I'm having sex with a guy, I'll just be like, ah, <laughs> <fuck> me. 
but I can't tell if I sound like a porn star or a race car. <laughs> Just uh, boom, <laughs> thunder and lightning, Ali yeah. Mikovsky. the beast. Damn, she's on Holy fire. Holy shit, that's fun. I'm so nervous. <laughs> That was very funny. Oh, oh okay. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous at all. You're really talented. That was very funny. You just turned 21? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like I saw her before on one of the other shows. Then. You may have been, uh, yeah, you may have been, been on there. when Before, before the, the embargo. Episodes. Yes. She's only been back for two weeks. Yeah, this is my second time back. And how, you're just freshly 21. How long have you been on stand-up? Uh, two years now. Right. Two years. Is it hard to get in when you were 19 and 20? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Wow. So it's like bars? this weird it's like this weird thing where like uh when you when you have boobs you just are like, Hey, I have boobs, let me in and they're like, Okay. Mm. That's why when I started out I always carried a pair of boobs in my backpack with me. <laughs> and they'd be like, What the what the fuck makes you think you're going on? Yeah, they, they like, start Hello. Telling you like, Tools Hello. of the trade. Oh, yeah, they boobs. Were, <laughs> they weren't my own boobs, I just carried someone else's in. I just made that joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. said, can I specifically I, said I kept my boobs in a backpack. And, can I uh, get? Can I get? I even did an again? act out with it, which I, which I very rarely do because it's a podcast. But if you looked over, you would have seen. <laughs> I was actually holding the boobs for a moment. Did I want to get banned again at this point. <laughs> <laughs> did you really get fired? In the I did. I did get fired for being unprofessional. I mean, well, the place I saw you at. Not a movie theater. Um, I was on my phone all the time, and I didn't really care about the job. Excellent, that's good. Excellent way yeah. to go. That's good. <laughs> if you're funny, like the last guy, yeah. we were trying to tell him. If you're funny, that's the way that, to go. That means you are professional. Yeah, you're a professional comedian. Sure. Yeah. yeah, fuck that job. Yeah. Fuck everybody who works there too. How about that? Yeah. Tell me where it is. Fuck uh, Let's call Arclight. Them out. Arclight in Hollywood. You, Arclight in Hollywood. Oh, I, don't. I, I like that theater. place. Yeah. Everybody, everybody <laughs> likes bad. the Arclight. I feel bad now. Even in comedy, they're always very friendly. Yeah. People are always nice. It's a really Cinerama good theater. Dome. You can pick yeah. your seat. Yeah. It's really yeah. nice. I do like it there. <laughs> I there was a guy, a homeless guy, who would come in like so often, and the tickets there are like twenty dollars. And he would masturbate in the theater. Yeah. And I just yeah. let him go because got to take a break. Th- th- there's a yeah. lot of people. <laughs> little arc light in the dark light. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what if he hits somebody's so popcorn rich. with that? Just fucking. How are you going to know? <laughs> He's both of you. That's the way to do it. Jerk There's off in the arc light. Nothing like paying $25 <laughs> to go find a place to jerk off. Yeah. There, there, that's like a common thing. I used to work at a few movie theaters and we had a guy that would always come in with a newspaper underneath his arm. He, he looked professional and he would just put the newspaper down and mask. We kicked him out of like five different theaters. Like, in Why did you work Wait, at so many theaters? Wait, was this guy you, Brian? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Every theater I worked at, this guy would go and jerk off and with newspaper. And he looked just like me. His <laughs> name was <laughs> Tyler <laughs> Durden. I sometimes see him in comedy clubs even now. That's what Red Band. <laughs> that's what Red Band means when he says he's on a theater tour. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've only packed a newspaper. Son of a bitch. Man, that is fun. This is so cool. <laughs> well, hey, what movie was it that he would like? Was there a genre? Oh, the one, the one that he got, had to get kicked out of because someone was sitting next to him was uh, was Hail Caesar. <laughs> wow! <laughs> he just loves fifties Hollywood. I think. Oh my gosh! Wow. Who doesn't? To, he was about to shoot some Caesar dressing. Oh, okie dokie. Yeah. <laughs> Out of his and that's just a note, ladies. If you are going to take care of him, he prefers a Caesar in bed. So. <laughs> yes. Oh, shit. Allie, uh, we're really excited about having you back. We're excited, okay. excited, excited. Another great minute. You're Thank an absolute you. killer. Thanks Allie McCobb. You're very funny. She is. The future. He is ready. Look out. Band. She's coming for your job, Amy Red Schumer. Red Band. Red Band. Uh, yeah. We're going to go to the bucket one more time. You guys ready for this shit? Close out this motherfucker. Normally, for some fun historical reason, and I don't want to jinx it, and I probably am, but normally this is where the crazy person gets pulled out of for some reason. We once had a guy. What was that one guy's name? Ichabod. Ichabod. Holy shit. This guy was like a ghost of a ghost of a ghost. Here we go. Imran Khan. Keep 
Be- oh, shit. I hope Imran Khan never left a backpack in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Looks like this con Racist. is on us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> My goodness. Well, let's try it again. All right. How about Anthony Amorello? This is unbelievable. Wow. Love the people. Who they the fuck sign- signs up and leaves? I don't get it. Four people. Do you ever, like, take those people out of rotation? Like, they can't sure, come back? Yeah. We used to. It's Which too one's late here? Now. I pulled another name out Which of the bucket. Which one is this? Which one Put your hands together for Joe Mazzarini. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Dude, you're ruthless. Wow. All right. Fantastic. Um, just have a few things I'd like to say. Uh, recycling is so arrogant. That's it. That's, that's it. All right. That's <laughs> this is going really well. Um, if your company only has five employees, you cannot call yourself a CEO. That's another thing I'd like to say. Uh, Man, I, I want to thank Andrew for giving a good name to all us Uber drivers. Um, I, I'm, I was going to go into a story about that, but I'm never going to hit it in under the 15 seconds I have left. I, so, um, yeah. I, I want to apologize to all the other comics that actually <laughs> wanted to come up here and do material. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, wow. There he goes, Joe Mazzarini. Uh, yeah. Joe, have you, have you ever done stand-up comedy before? This is my uh, 12th time. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, the, just wanna, the Joe, other... I just, just want to say, uh, recycling those jokes is arrogant. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the first yeah. thing that you said was, I have a few things that I want to say here tonight. And then yeah. you only said a couple things. Yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not a few. That's a couple. Oh, yeah. uh, uh. You would have to say, there's a couple things I want to say here tonight and another thing I'm not going to have time for in the end. Yeah, yeah. That would actually have been really funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, but your brain. <laughs> if right. if I if I was gonna be really funny, this would have gone a much different way. Um, you know what, Joe? Recycling yeah. is arrogant. So I'm gonna send you off, and we're gonna get somebody else up here. How good, about good. That? All right, thanks. Good. All right, thank you. Get out of here, Joe. Hey, hey, Tony. Yeah, Jeremiah. I think that apology has legs. <laughs> it's good. It was good. What does he think? What does he think a joke is? All right, here we go. Pulling a name out of the bucket. How about Eddie Cisneros? It's the weirdest thing ever. Maybe we have to do something where uh, you know, you know, you know. If, I, if they were really wanted to get on stage, it would have just faked that they were that person. Yeah, that that definitely doesn't work. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's a double. Be band or red band? I pulled another name out. Here we go. Chris McCoy, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Woo! What's up, everyone? Uh, I don't touch kids, even though I kind of look like I do. I actually uh, worked with kids diagnosed with autism for like seven years, and. Uh, I used to drink a lot of water, and I'd forget to pull up my zipper. So when I'd get up, and I'd be like, hey, your kid's ready, they'd be crying and kicking and screaming. Like, what'd you do to my kid? I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't do that. And uh, the worst would be when a kid would be kicking and screaming, and I'd notice that my zipper was down. I'd zip it up, and someone would walk by, and they'd be like, are we okay in here? I'm like, yeah, no. And like, I didn't, I didn't fuck your kid. I'm just, <laughs> like really like the room said like microphones and cameras so like you can check like <laughs> there was no blood in my dick at all while your kid was so like uh, <laughs> yep. that's it there you go Chris McCoy This is a guy who definitely fucks kids. (laughs) I mean, let's face it, 100%. It's 
really the only thing you, that's even on your mind. No. Is that a pager? Do you have a pager? No, it's oh. my Prius. Gotcha. Did you fly up? I think so. Yeah. Um, you sort of remind me of like a weirder Al Yankovic. Okay. Or, or like he got held back at Hogwarts and he's still there. <laughs> or like an AV guy who teaches autistic kids. All right. Um, Chris, what do you do for work? I Uber. What is, it's exactly. just like everybody now. We're all just turning into one Uber robot. How Ro- come nobody uses Lyft? I only use Lyft now, Joe. How come there's none, none of these comics or Lyft drivers? What's going on I there? I don't know. I had a buddy actually uh, um, had a, his Lyft. He had a Lyft mustache. He's not actually my buddy. He's one of my neighbors. And he had a Lyft mustache in his car and a thief stole it. Somebody, from somebody lifted car. it? What is a lift mustache? Like the it's big <laughs> pink mustache, mustache they used to have on the car before they like, made it a little one. I ran into him today. He's like, dude, where you been? Blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever. I've been out on the road continuously. He's like, I haven't seen you forever. I'm, he's like, I, someone broke into my car. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry to hear that. What'd they take? He's like, my lift mustache. I'm like, it's not that bad, right? Start a new life? He didn't think it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's a sign. You should get your shit together. All right. Chris, you're just straight up Uber, though. Uber X? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Triple it's got X. a fucking Prius. What'd you do before Uber? What did a guy like you do? Bookstore? Barnes & Noble? Something like that? No. I, uh, Getting a book vibe from Amoeba? you. Child molester. Something with books. Do you ever feel like you were born in the wrong decade? No. <laughs> Because you like fit right in like a Woodstock's documentary. You could even go farther back. You're almost like Benjamin Franklin esque a little bit. You know what I mean? You look no, like I, I could picture man. you flying a kite in the rain. I see like early seventies. Yeah. He yeah. takes off a wig. He's Crispin Glover. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Reagan letting it rip in the late innings here. Uh, Chris, so tell us more about you. You look uh, sort of like uh, you look like you could both read and play electric guitar. No, I play drums. Whoa! Oh, shit. Me. Look at this, Damn. a white guy trying to take a job from a Mexican. No. I'm Mexican too. <laughs> no, I'm Mexican. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, shit. Mexican drum off. Mexican <laughs> drum off. Mexican, Mexican drum off. Mexican. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> There it is. Are you ready for a Mexican drum off, Brian? Get back there. We have been known to have uh, very fun segments happen spontaneously on the show. Live audience, to close out tonight's show, are you ready for the first ever Kill Tony Mexican drum off? Yeah! All right, now here's the deal. Joel Jimenez has home field advantage, right? So Joel he, Jimenez. Joel has the right to rebuttal. So he goes first, and then Joel will Absolutely. Have so going first here in the battle, the Mexican drum off. Chris McCoy, everybody. Here he goes. Oh, dear. They didn't even shake hands. I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> I was almost out of here, and then this shit happens. <laughs> Mother. Isn't that the worst? Isn't it your American duty to leave before the Mexicans start drumming? I mean, <laughs> All right, this is Chris. one of the rare shows in America where you can tell a joke about fucking a baby and then they invite you to a drum off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rare today. It's so rare today. Everyone's <laughs> so sensitive. Yeah. I hope there's no blood in the drum stool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, you want to hit this shit? You want to just take over? Do something yeah. crazy? What do you want to do? One, two, three, four. Chris McCoy with his half of the drum off. I'm scared for whatever the fuck's about to happen because Joel Menace was just <laughs> taking off clothes.
that wasn't my best. <laughs> Joel Jimenez! The Kill Tony Tremor! <laughs> Wow! Yeah. Chris McCoy, yeah. you can kiss your fat ass goodbye. I think the kid did pretty yeah. good Chris. considering that Get he went Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> yeah. Build the wall! 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 Build the wall. wall! Holy fucking shit. Yeah. Gotta love it. I think it's awesome that I he's a, he's a always say that we have more fun okay. on Mondays than anybody else in the world. We do Mondays correctly. Chris, uh, how do you feel about that? my boy uh, Joe Jimenez! Anything else, Chris? How do you feel about just getting your ass handed to you in front of a bunch? Oh, it wasn't my drum set. I so. think you mean Kulo. Oh, oh. Wait a second. Wait a whoa, second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait um, a second. That sounded whoa, whoa. Like I think us. Joe Jimenez might have to take off his underwear for this one. <laughs> You know, you know, other so, uh, things happen there, right? Uh, also, Joel, your underwear's inside out, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Haynes is not Enash. <laughs> <laughs> Those are boxers. That's how they rock it today. You want to let people know your brand. It's fucking on inside They're definitely out. inside out. <laughs> <laughs> now their shit stains on. Point. That is a fair point. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, do you feel like if it was your own drum set, you would have done better? A or do you feel like if you knew what the fuck he was going to do, with all this craziness taking his clothes off, that that was kind of a dirty trick? Oh, uh, no. Uh, would I you have taken your clothes off if you went and did that Do you first? want a rebuttal in your underwear? Would you have, would, nah. would you have just... <laughs> would you have just whipped your hog out and started slamming on the cymbals? Oh, uh, we could go Red Hot song. Chili Pepper style. Motherfucker, I'll show you what's up. Red Hot Chili oh, Pepper shit. style. Oh, shit. There yeah. he goes. Joel yeah. Hernandez just disappeared. Joel with the sock of truth. Sock with, an, sock. with the sock of truth. We just want to know how bad you want to make it, bro. <laughs> this is like a... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, please dim the lights on this one. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. You I know that sock is coming loose when he starts slamming them feet up and down. Oh, yeah. There's never been a cock sock in the world that's very durable. Uh, oh, the bond is just very <laughs> precarious, <laughs> always, <laughs> barely hanging on. Joe, I haven't seen a pussy so that hairy <laughs> since 79. <laughs> He's one of the few men left that doesn't manscape. He's a fucking real man, ladies. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. There's a lot of this going on in his house. I've never seen a Mexican that doesn't take care of his bush. You know what I mean? It's a landscaping joke. <laughs> hey, do you want to sit in that seat now? No. <laughs> Don't be scared, man. Chris McCoy, is there anything it's else? There's only one way you're going to win. You take your shirt off, you put it on top of there, you got to get fully naked, no sock, and then you win. Suck his dick. Suck his dick. Suck his dick. Suck his dick. Chris, it's the only way you can really save yourself. Well, I'll listen, man. You know, it's not a loss. It's a learning experience. But for, for sure, don't blame the drum set. This guy's naked behind you, man. Some shit got crazy. A little bit. Chris. You got to accept that some shit got crazy. It wasn't just the drum set. Bit. Chris, Look is there the anything? This guy did. He got like naked. <laughs> he started beating the fuck out of the drums. It's like Flea and Tick. Chris, is there anything else that you want to tell us that you're good at when you're really just mediocre at it? Uh. I play left-handed, so the se- the setup's messed oh. is in reverse. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. But hey, hey, his underwear. <laughs> his underwear was in reverse. Solomonas is on fire right now. By the way, <laughs> just playing along with everything. Right. I didn't know I was gonna play drums, but I could hang Did off you know you were gonna the building, right. and clean the windows. <laughs> I could do that. You can what? I could hang off a 60-story building and clean the windows. You do that? I used to in Hawaii for two years. I used to do that also. So you wired or harnessed anything? You sit on a boson chair, like on a wood plank, and then you rig it to a rope and you just go down. Whoa. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Can you do that going down hand job one more time? Oh, you squeeze it. (laughs) You are the real McCoy. Chris, uh... Do you know anybody who fell? McCoy. Yeah. 
They lived. They, they oh. fell five stories and then they lived. They broke all their bones. But oh! But it wasn't their drum set. So. Five stories. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Boo! Five stories and yeah. lived. What yeah. did they land on? He, their the ass. Bucket. <laughs> a bucket. A bu- bucket where we keep our water. He landed on top oh. of that and like <sighs> saved him. Otherwise, he would have died. Oh, Christ. And he did heroin too. So. <laughs> oh. He did heroin before he was cleaning falling? windows? Uh, I think he was on heroin. You oh, should know because you did it with him, right? No, no, no. This was like years ago sold before the I worked there. Oh, and that's where the term worked. kick the bucket came from. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Hawaii 5, no on that one. <laughs> you Chris feel weird McCoy. about that naked guy behind you who just beat you playing drums? Is that weird? On his drum set? No. But he's like dominant. He's dominant behind you. He's I naked. would say that getting owned by a guy who just has his uh, dick covered in a tube sock has put, to be a this. little lock. I mean, it's just a suit hair, really. It's, uh, <laughs> just a suit jacket and a tube sock. And he's like directly, like he's, he's like projecting it towards you, the whole thing. And when he first came out, he was actually holding it on while he was walking, but he hasn't touched in quite a while, which leads me to believe that uh, he, got an ere- he got an erection when uh, he owned you. And now the sock's just holding on itself. That would be way hard to deal with, right, if he was rock hard, just playing his ass off. And you're like, I can't even get hard when I'm by myself. <laughs> this dude is up here beating on the drums hard as a rock. Okay. <laughs> and all aggressive about it. It's weird, right? It's <laughs> weird. Very rarely does this happen to you in life. Where yeah. you don't know it's going to happen, but you're on stage and there's a dude naked behind you beating the fuck out of the drums, and it's all about you. While you're doing a while you're doing a squat, showing us how you go down. Oh, yeah. Look at his piercing gaze. Look behind you. Yeah. He hasn't taken his eyes off you, man. He's like a fucking jaguar. He's he's yeah. like one of those mountain lions looking at your house cat through the window. And you ever see those of, memes? And, and speaking of piercing gaze, um. <laughs> 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 piercing gaze. Look at him, man. <laughs> he hasn't stopped staring at you, dude. He's sizing you up. This is dark. This Fuck is dark. You might not know. Joel Jimenez is actually a superhero who uh, gets pedophiles off the streets by, <laughs> by by beating them in drum battles. So, Chris, it was nice to meet you. There he goes, Chris McCoy's first time on the show. A lot of new people tonight. A lot of new shows. Chris McCoy is on Twitter. Rednecks three thousand. Joe Rogan, we're doing uh, Columbus and Philly next weekend. I'm really excited about that. Yes, we are, Tony Hinchcliffe. And we'll, we'll be at the Pasadena Ice House this weekend. But yes. that shit sold out. Yes, indeed. Russell Peters, you got anything coming up or anything Russell crazy? Russell Peters. New Netflix special, October Boom. 7th. Yeah. October 7th. Jeremiah Watkins, Pat Reagan. At Jeremiah Stand Up on Twitter. The next stand up on the spot is October 18th here at the Comedy Store. I'd like to give an Emmy to Jeremiah Watkins for best drummer right now. <laughs> Joel Jimenez. Joel Jimenez. Yeah, this, that's the sorry. star of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Joel Jimenez, Joel Jimenez. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Give it up for that bad motherfucker. That's the golden cock. cock. Ryan I'm mostly Jay. sorry on Twitter. <laughs> He's mostly sorry on Twitter. Ryan J. E. Belt's drawing that took place during this show has all four of us on it. His, his car just got wrecked. So go buy some prints. You can buy the official Kill Tony poster, which is on the ground. Uh, live on the stage. Uh, that's it. We did it. Thank you so much, live audience. Awesome. You guys were an awesome, awesome crowd. It was so Thank fun. you. Thank we made you history. We love you. Good night. Thank you.